Archon is the first of its kind. It's an open source AI agent that builds other AI agents. And I used it to create something pretty insane that I'm gonna show you right now. I'm calling Archon the world's first agent here because I really haven't seen anything like it before. It builds AI agents with pure code so you're not tied to a specific platform. And it uses advanced agentic techniques under the hood when it's building these agents on the fly so you get much better results compared to the generalist AI coding assistant. I have been working constantly on Archon the last couple of months, and not only is it shaping up to be an incredible AI agent builder for you to use and learn from, but I've already made a bunch of impressive agents with it. And there's one in particular that I cannot wait to showcase to you right now, because I used Archon to build an AI agent army. It's a bunch of specialized sub-agents that are each leveraging an MCP server, so that my primary agent can be connected to a bunch of different services super easily. It's the beginning of the ultimate personal assistant, and the best part is, I didn't even have to code it myself. So it really shows the power of Archon, and even this agent is worthy of its own video. So allow me to show you this AI agent army, which you can use right now. And then as a bonus, I'll show you how I was able to build it with Archon. Really exciting stuff, so let's dive right into it. So here is the GitHub repo for Archon, which I'll link to in the description of this video. Archon is the mastermind behind everything that I'm about to show you, and I use it to build all of my AI agents now because it is the AI agent that builds other agents or an agent here as I like to call it. And there are two reasons why I'm building this as a completely free and open source tool for you. The first one is that I'm doing what they call build in public, where I build Archon in iterations, sharing my journey with you as I build this powerful tool. So it's not like Archon is this production ready thing right now. It's experimental, I'm still working on it, but you get to come alongside the journey with me and even contribute if you want. And then the other reason is it's an educational framework. I'm using Archon as a way to teach you more advanced agentic concepts using my favorite Python AI frameworks like Pydantic AI and Langgraph. So that's Archon as a whole, and there's instructions for installing and running this yourself in this readme if you want to use it for yourself. But right now what I wanna do is share with you the AI agent army that I built with MCP servers that I built with Archon. We'll play around with it, and then later I'll dive more into Archon and the future changes that I have for it. And as I already alluded to, I've already built a lot of impressive AI agents with Archon. So I've got this folder with all of the best agents that I've been working on. Right now we're gonna focus on the MCP agent army. And by the way, if you're curious about how I built any of these other agents, if any of these names pique your interest, check out dynamis.ai. It's an exclusive community that I'm starting. The waitlist is open for it now, and I'm going to be having a lot of live sessions, these workshops, where I'll go into how I built all of these agents so you can use them for yourself. But anyway, right now we're going to be focusing on the MCP agent army. So I've got this open. Let's bring this into an IDE. I'll show you the code really quick and then we'll see how powerful it is. So all of the code that you're looking at right here, I did not write myself. I used Archon to make everything. And I did have to iterate a few times as you usually have to do with AI coding assistance. But it's just awesome that after just a few tries, this is all working and I didn't have to code it at all. And so I have this GitHub repo available for you to download just like Archon if you wanna run this yourself, hook in your own MCP servers. I'll show you how to do that later as well. I even have the original prompt that I used to kick off the build with Archon. And then a readme with instructions on how to set up everything yourself. And I cover why we're doing it this way anyway, because the first big question is, why set up specialized agents? Why not just give all of these MCP tools to a single agent? And the reason for that is specialized agents are powerful because LLMs get overwhelmed very quickly if you give them too many tools because every single tool is just increasing the length of the prompt to the LLM. And so if you split up the burden of the different tools between different specialized agents, that means all your prompts are smaller, the LLMs are gonna get overwhelmed less, and you just have to have one primary agent that can dish out the requests depending on which MCP server needs to be used. And so if you ask it to search the web, the primary agent will be like, oh yeah, I need to use the Brave MCP server. So I'll just call the Brave sub-agent that will then figure out which tool to use in the Brave MCP server. 
So I hope that makes sense. I'll cover in a little bit exactly how everything is set up here. But first I wanna show you how powerful this is really quick. So I have a version of this, which I turned into an API endpoint that you can see right here in the studio integration version folder. So I've got this running in the terminal as an API endpoint, and I have that hooked into my agent zero application, which I've covered on my channel previously. It's a way for you to connect any local agent into a front end. So we have full chat and conversation history. And so right off the bat, I can ask it a simple question that will use one of our sub agents. So I can say, what GitHub repos do I have? And then usually it asks for my GitHub username. So I'll say my username is colam 0 So I'll send in this request, go back over to my terminal, and you can see that it decides to call the GitHub agent with the query, list all repositories for the username colam 0 And so it'll take a little bit to make that request and come back with all my repos. So I'll come back once that is done. And boom, there we go. All of my GitHub repos listed. We've got Archon, the AI agents masterclass, automator agents, local AI package. I don't want to keep scrolling because it lists my private repos as well. But yeah, this is working great. The primary agent knew to route the request to the GitHub sub agent that uses all the tools from the GitHub MCP server. And so now I'm going to go ahead and start a new conversation. Let's ask it something a lot more complex that will force it to use multiple specialized agents within one request because I want it to search the web for top AI agent frameworks. And then what I wanted to do is go into the frameworks table that I have in my AI research base and add each of these with a source where it found that information from the search as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and send in this request. And the first thing that it'll do is it'll send a request to Brave. There we go, top AI agent frameworks for 2025. And so I'll let that run. And then after we'll want it to call into the Airtable subagent. And yep, there we go. We got a result. We got Langchain, OpenAI Swarm. I don't know if I agree with all of these in this list, but yeah, it searched the web for me. It did what it was supposed to do. And I could be more specific if I wanted to do a deeper search as well, obviously. And so now it's calling the Airtable agent to list all the entries that are available in the framework table. So first it wants to decide what's here already, which it's gonna get nothing back. And then it'll end up calling for each of those 10 records to add them in for these frameworks. And so I'll pause and come back once it has completed that request in full. And there we go. It added all the records to Airtable. We can see the calls to the sub agent in the terminal and going into Airtable itself, we've got these 10 records. It's missing Pydantic AI. So not the perfect list, but I mean, it's all opinion anyway. It did a good job researching that for me. And so now I can ask it to continue. I can have it use yet another specialized agent to continue the conversation. Cause I can say, okay, great. Now get the exact URL for the Airtable base for AI research and send a link to that in the research channel in Slack. All right, so now continuing the conversation, it has to pick up where it left off, get that link using the Airtable subagent, unless it fetched it already in a tool, and then send me that message in Slack right here. So let's see if it can do that. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of time. It's thinking about it. Let's actually see the terminal here. Um, yep, all right, calling Airtable and calling the Slack agent. All right, so let's go into Slack, and there we go. Yep, we got our table, and I can open this link, and boom, we're in. We got our list up in a new tab here. So this is working perfect. It's using all these different sub-agents in tandem to do some really neat things, kind of like a personal assistant would do for us. The sponsor of today's video is Vectorize, and I'm excited to bring them to you today because they're solving a huge pain point for AI solutions. Because here's the thing, most AI agents rely on RAG to bring external knowledge into the fold so they have access to your documents. But the hardest part about implementing RAG is just processing your data, getting your documents in something like Google Drive, formatted in the way where you can store it in your vector database, something like Supabase or Pinecone. This data processing is called a RAG pipeline, and you've seen these before in N8N workflows, custom code. It's always complicated, especially when you have to work with a bunch of different file types. But look at how simple this is in Vectorize. In just four steps, we create create a full RAG pipeline. It's gonna be constantly waiting for files that are updated or created within all these different sources that you can select here. And then we have a step to extract the text, a step to embed it, to prep it for the vector database. And then finally, the step to insert it. And this supports a bunch of different vector databases as well, like Pinecone, Weaviate, Supabase, they're all available to you. It's so easy to configure this in just minutes. Plus they have this RAG sandbox where you can chat with an AI agent using this knowledge base like I did right here. Got the current version of Archon perfectly. You can connect this with an API to N8N or your custom Python agents. There's so
so much control that you have with this, bringing it into your own projects. And the other thing I wanna show you really quick is you can upload your documents and it'll recommend the configurations for your RAG pipeline based on automated testing it does. So it really just takes your RAG pipelines to the next level. So I'll have a link in the description to Vectorize. I definitely recommend checking them out if you want to take all of the unknowns out of ingesting your data for RAG. So I hope that that quickly showed you how powerful this MCP AI agent army is. And now I wanna show you how I built it with Archon, how everything's set up, and also how you can extend this to add any MCP server that you want, because this really can be a template for your personal assistant. You can use MCP to connect to any of your different services, and having this specialized agent setup means that you could add 10, 12, 15, 20 MCP servers, and you're not going to overwhelm your system. And so the way that this is all set up is using the new MCP integration that my favorite AI agent framework, Pydantic AI, released recently. So they have details on this in their documentation, which I'll link to in the description of this video. This is what I fed into Archon, because Archon ingests all the documentation for Pydantic AI. So it used this to understand how to build what I'm about to show you. Because with this new integration, it is this easy to set up an MCP server connection that you can use in your Pydantic AI agents. And so the config will look very similar to your config with something like Cloud Desktop or Windsurf or Cursor as well. So we set up all the servers like Brave and Airtable. We have the file system access, access to GitHub, to Slack like we saw earlier, and then also Firecrawl to scrape individual pages. And then we just create an agent for each of these. So we have our Airtable agent where we just give it the model we want to use. I'm actually using GPT-40 mini in this case. And so with that demo that you just saw, it wasn't even that powerful of an LLM. It was still able to do things really well. And then we have our system prompt. And then this new parameter that Pydantic AI released where we can pass in a list of MCP servers that we want to connect for the tools for the agent. And so in this case, for each of these sub agents, we're just giving it a single tool so that it's specialized for using that MCP server. And then for our primary agent, again, we just give it the model and then the system prompt. And then we have a tool defined for each of the sub agents that it can call into. And so it uses this doc string to understand when and how to use each of the sub agents. And so if we have a request that goes in for it to search the web, it'll be like, oh yeah, okay, I should use the Brave MCP server through that sub agent. And so it'll pass on the request to be handled by the Brave agent specifically. And so having all the sub agents handle the individual tools in the MCP server releases that burden from the primary agent. So now it only has to worry about which agent to call on, not which specific tool. So instead of having to pick from 30 different tools, it only has to pick from six different agents. You can see how that releases the burden decreases the size of the prompts overall. And this is all using pretty basic Pydantic AI code. And so take this for yourself and set this up for whatever MCP servers you want, because you can just go to the configuration guide for any MCP server in GitHub or wherever you find that server. And you can just copy that to set up that config here. So you define the server, you define a sub agent, and then you just have to define a tool for the primary agent to use that sub agent. That is all it takes for you to hook in any sub agent that you want. And of course, Archon can help you with that as well. You could give this as a starting point to Archon, like just copy this code paste it into Archon and say, hey, I want you to now add the Quadrant MCP server, for example, for RAG. And I even have the prompt available in this GitHub repo. This shows you the exact prompt I used to kick off the AI agent process with Archon. So you can take this prompt, you can copy it, and you can set up Archon just following the instructions in the readme. And then you can dump it right away in the chat, or you can set this up as an MCP server to use in an AI IDE like Windsurf or Cursor and have it create the code for you that way too. And so I already have this conversation up. It's just an old one that I want to show you because it did a good job even after the first request. It didn't quite one shot this whole setup as I said earlier, but it still had a really amazing starting point. And so yeah, this is the same prompt that I had in that text file. And then this is what it produced after the first try where it sets up all of these MCP servers. It doesn't have the command quite right for each of these MCP servers. So that's one of the things that I had to correct. But 
they had a really good starting point hooking in all these individual agents with the different environment variables for all the MCP servers. It got that part right. And then it created the primary agent that has a dependency for each of its sub agents. So yeah, working really, really well. And so yeah, it defines the tools for each of the sub agents to call into pretty much what we saw in the Python script that I showed you earlier, but we just had to refine it through a couple of iterations. And so that's what I did throughout this conversation. I mean, it got kind of long, but yeah, it didn't take that long overall. And this kind of thing is not super easy to set up in a generalist AI IDE. Like if you were to try this exact same thing in Windsurf or Cursor, you would not get nearly as good of results because just the way that Archon is able to work with the documentation for Pydantic AI and refine itself. There's a whole agentic flow under the hood that I'll show you in a second here that makes it possible to produce something like this that isn't gonna be perfect right away, but it felt pretty close this time. And so I've just had a blast building things with Archon, especially this AI agent army. This is just something that I feel like is a really good template to take going forward whenever you wanna connect MCP servers to your custom AI agents. So back over to Archon to finish things off because I want to show you how I built Archon in a way where it could build that MCP AI agent army and I want to share some upcoming features for Archon that are super exciting too. So the first thing is I implemented version 6 for Archon recently which is a tool library and MCP integration and so now we have all of these pre-built tools examples and MCP servers that are all within this agent resources folder and I have this new agent in the whole process for Archon that based on the user's request, it'll actually pick different examples to give to the primary coder. So it'll say like, oh yeah, I need to develop an MCP agent. Well, let me look at this example and I'll figure out based on this, along with the Podantic AI documentation, how to make that happen. And then we also have the MCPs folder, which gives the config for a lot of different servers, like the ones we were using for our AI agent army. And I definitely wanna add a lot more later as well. But yeah, in each of these JSON files, we have the config for that MCP server. So Archon will take this and figure out how to format it for what we need for Pydantic AI for that integration. And then we also have pre-built tools as well, so that if we don't wanna use MCP servers, if you want something faster, or if we just want custom tools that aren't in MCP servers, then we can implement the tools right like this as functions, just kind of the classic way to build tools for our agents. And so those are all of the resources now, and I wanna keep adding more and more. It's kind of just a version one list of resources and MCP servers. But if I scroll all the way down to the graph for Archon, we have this new agent added. This is the advisor. So this is what intelligently picks the examples, pre-built tools, and MCP servers, and it feeds that into the primary coder agent. And that all depends on exactly what the user is asking for. And so we have quite a few agents now in this whole process for Archon. Like it's, it's starting to get pretty robust and I'm able to build things with it that I never could have, or at least would have taken many more prompts with something like Windsurf or Cursor. So I'm having a blast with Archon and I've got a lot of other plans for it as well that are coming up soon here. So you can check out this GitHub repo if you wanna go through future iterations of Archon, things that I got coming up. One big thing is including the LangGraph documentation as well as Pydantic AI. There's already a pull request out for this that I just needed to review. Um, they did an awesome job, so I'm just working on finishing up reviewing that. But then Archon will be able to build with both Pydantic AI and LangGraph. So really start to build sophisticated AI agents. I can't wait for that. And then one other one that I want to call out really quick. I don't want to cover all of these right now, but another one that'll be super cool is version nine, which this will mean that Archon can literally not just build the agent, but actually spin up an isolated environment, like create a database and stuff and run the agent and figure out, okay, is it working? Are there any errors? Is it giving good results? And then take all of that and then autonomously refine the agent. So just taking that uh, self-feedback loop to the next level, actually running the agent. So, so many awesome things that I've got in store for Archon. I hope that this can just be an awesome tool for you to build your agents, learn more advanced agentic systems, because it is an educational framework as well, like I said earlier. So yeah, I hope that you just have a blast with this like I have been having. And of course, let me know in the comments if you have any questions at all. I'm always open to answering anything you're curious about. So I hope that this video clearly showed you the power and potential of Archon with an AI agent that you can use right now and tweak to your own needs. I mean, you can basically connect any MCP server that you want to this AI agent army.
Also, I have a lot more coming up for Archon with more content and more features. So stay tuned for that and check out the GitHub page as well, which I'll link to in the description if you want to see my vision and the upcoming features I want to implement. And I'd also very much appreciate a star on the GitHub repo as well. It means a lot to me. So if you appreciated this content and you're looking forward to more things Archon and AI agents, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.